In 2022 and onwards, it has become extremely important that you find ways to dominate the Google Shopping ad section, the Google Shopping listing section, simply because if you are not dominating, somebody else is dominating and they are instead stealing your market share. So in this video, I'm going to be going over not one, not two, but seven different ways to dominate Google Shopping ads based on over five years of experience now that I've been within e-commerce. I've been running Google ads. So this is one video you're gonna wanna watch until the end. But let's start off with way number one to dominate those shopping listings. And this is using the existing images, whatever you have, to stand out of the crowd from the rest of your competitors. Now, what do I mean by this exactly? This is not exactly what you would personally think because if we go on over to Google and we type in one of my most famous examples of 3D printer, here's exactly what I mean. So you could be selling the same exact product as somebody else or to make it better, you might wanna actually sell something completely differently like the first person that is appearing right over here is doing, but that's not necessarily what you have to always do. So for example, let's assume you're selling a 3d printer which is very similar to these ones that are appearing right here same style same color even and you want to stand out of the crowd because you don't have any other 3d printers which you have to sell what do you do this is number one on my list because I personally believe based on my experience that image decides about 95% of your overall success with the Google Shopping ad. So if you have the wrong image, you are just not gonna make it with Google Shopping, you're not gonna be able to dominate and appear more towards the front. Now, does that mean that you cannot appear at all just because you have the same image as everybody else? That's not necessarily what I mean because these people, they have basically the same image to each other, yet they're still appearing number one, number two, number three, and so forth. But here's exactly what I mean. So for example, let's say you wanna sell the 3D printer like the ones we saw earlier, but you want to find a way to stand out of the crowd. One thing you want to first of all do is look at all your competitors to understand what kind of images they are providing. So clearly here, everybody is providing the same general image, which is just the printer on a white background just facing the camera. Maybe it's turned to the right, maybe it's turned to the left, or maybe it's just straight up facing the camera like this one, but that's the general idea. Now, standing out of the crowd when it's like this right here might not necessarily be too easy, especially if your suppliers, all of those sections where you're getting the image for that 3D printer from are the exact same ones like these. However, if you are able to look into your supplier's listings, if your supplier is able to give you some better or different images for that matter, for example, one good image that we could use if we were selling this kind of 3D printer is this one right here. Now, if we compare this specific 3D printer image to what we were seeing just earlier when we typed in 3D printer, we can see exactly what I'm trying to say. So it doesn't matter if we're trying to sell this 3D printer, this one, this one, just get a general overview of what all the images are right here and then try to find a way to stand out so for example if I was selling this same exact thing obviously because this guy already has a white background plain image of this 3d printer I'm not really gonna use the same image because again I want to stand out of the crowd so this would be the perfect image to use in this situation why because this is on a real lifestyle background this is a real lifestyle image not the generic ones we are seeing here so not only are you different differentiating yourself from your main competitor, which is this guy right here, but you are differentiating yourself from everybody on the list. And that is the best thing you can do in 2022 and onwards to dominate with Google shopping ads. Just find a way to get those images for the product you're trying to sell, whether it's through your supplier, whether it's doing a little bit of digging through images and just use an image which basically helps you stand out of the crowd. The easiest way is again, if everybody else is doing a white background image, you come in and you do a real lifestyle image like this. If everybody has a lifestyle image, then you do a plain a white background image. That's literally all you need to be doing in order to kind of stand out of the crowd and differentiate yourself from the rest. Because again, 95% of your success will come from the image itself. Moving on to the second quick example I have for you guys, which is the car air bed mattress example and as you can see right here a lot of these images are very very similar to each other now there's two different ways for your image to stand out of the crowd number one way is by just having a completely different style color size shape etc of that product itself like this one does right here this is the color blue while everybody else is gray black and so forth the second way to stand out with their images by having something that is completely different 
from what your competitors are doing. So here, everybody has a lifestyle image. It's within a real car and the background and everything is very real. It's not Photoshop, it's not white, none of that stuff, it's fully real. So because you see everybody doing this, this guy did it perfectly right here. And of course it's Amazon, but even though this is not the best image in the world, they do have that right general idea of how to stand out. They decided to have a white background image for their product. And even though it's not really, again, the best image, it's still kind of standing out on its own just because everybody here is blending in with each other. So very easy way to dominate with Google Shopping. Just do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. But this kind of brings me to way number two, and that is to use enhanced conversion tracking. Now, enhanced conversion tracking is just something recently I have begun to do for a lot of my e-commerce clients under my Google Ads agency, Euro Marketing, and also my own e-commerce brands. So that's simply because I personally started to realize that about 20 to 30 percent of extra conversions, which is 20 to 30 percent of extra valuable data is getting recorded properly within the Google Ads account. And there's actually a lot of different things that enhanced conversion tracking does. So if we look at it really quick right over here on Google's official doc, we can see exactly how enhanced conversion tracking helps. So it says with enhanced conversions for web first party customer data, such as email address, name, home address, or even their phone number is captured in the conversion tracking tags and it's hashed and then sent to Google in the hashed form. Basically what is happening is a lot of extra valuable data, which was before without enhanced conversion tracking was not getting sent is now going to be getting sent to Google. And here are the main benefits. So benefit number one, it recovers conversions that could not have been measured otherwise with just basic conversion tracking. But in addition, it actually helps with the bidding optimization. And it kind of makes sense because if you are submitting a lot of extra information to the algorithm that's on your account, what's going to happen is it's going to get smarter and smarter much faster because it now has access to all of this extra information. So the bidding is going to optimize at a much quicker level. In case you're thinking that this goes against Google's policies, that's not the case because the customer's privacy is fully safe with the hashing of the customer data. When it hashes, what happens is a lot of the information is not directly available to you. It's not a language which we humans can read. So this is really valuable that you should be implementing on your Google Ads account because it doesn't really have any cons to it. Just has a lot of benefits. It's gonna help your algorithm get faster at a much quicker level. And the way to kind of figure out how to do this is if you go within your conversion section, so from tools and settings, if you go right here under measurement, you can click the first option, which says conversions. And on this page, you go to your main purchase conversion action. And within that, the very last option should be enhanced conversion. So for this account right here, as you can see, it's already turned on, but you need to basically turn it on. If it's not already turned on, you need to select a tag type and you can choose between the global site tag or GTM, which is Google Tag Manager or the API. Now, if you don't know how to do this properly, I do recommend you watch some YouTube videos on it or best thing you can do is actually hire somebody to do this for you. Because again, if you get this wrong, this can actually mess up a lot of your conversion tracking information and you're not going to have a lot of good information after that. So make sure you kind of do invest into doing this properly because once it's done, I guarantee you 20 to 30% extra conversions will be recorded and that's going to help you long term tremendously when it comes to making your algorithm smarter, when it comes to getting more information to your campaigns. But this brings me to the third point on the list, which is just use the right attribution model to begin with. Now, attribution model, again, you can see this within tools and settings, measurement conversions. If you click on the main conversion action, in this case, it's the first one, you will see the attribution model right here. Now, for this account, it's data driven, and this is not actually ideal because this is a brand new account we're just possibly starting to work with very shortly. Shortly, so I would go in and I would change this up. But data driven, one of the worst attribution models you can be using, surefire way to mess up your account. There's better ones like last click and even also linear, which can do the trick and what I recommend, especially for a lot of the accounts. So if you're a beginner account, I do recommend last click if you're more advanced, meaning 50 to 100 sales or more, go with linear. I don't necessarily recommend data driven. And again, if you don't know what the, each of these data attribution models are, I have made a whole video covering each of these in detail, which you can check out on my channel. But trust me, choosing the right attribution model makes the difference between you scaling your account and between you basically failing with that account. And if we go back to the campaign level, 
within this account right over here, you can see exactly what I mean. So the main reason why we got this account to work with under my Google ads agency is because the owner is really struggling to make it profitable. I mean, if you can see the ROAS right now is a 1.52 in the last 30 days alone, the ROAS was not that great. It was a 1.72, but it is continuing to drop and I have not even started working with this yet. So none of this is my work personally, but one of my speculation is one of the major things why the ROAS is not so good is because of that attribution model this company is using. But nonetheless, the number four way to dominate with Google Shopping ads, specifically in this case, Performance Max, is to stay away from the interest and detailed demographic section of the PMAX campaign. And here's exactly what I mean. So I kind of got this idea after looking at a lot of different e-commerce brands, specifically their performance max campaigns and this account too, which we're currently again, not really working with just auditing at this moment. But if we go inside this performance max campaign within the asset group section, we can see many different things going on. First things first, they have for some reason, different asset groups. It's not really necessary to have various different asset groups when you can do the trick with just one different asset groups. Think of it as having one campaign, but five different ad sets. But with Google ads, that's really not necessary and that's not how Google works. But again, this is not something I personally did. So we just kind of have to go with the flow. But what I do want to focus on is the audience signal section. So if we go inside right here, we look at some of the audience signals. So for example, just clicking on switch audience signal, we are shown different audience signals. So we see right here at the top, various different audience signals. What I want to go do is go inside one of these audience signals and show you exactly what I'm telling you to stay away from. And this is again, the best way to dominate with Google shopping because you will have to sooner or later figure this out because performance max are the only kind of shopping campaigns that will be left at the end of the day. So one thing this specific store did and they've sell a lot of iPhone cases. So what they did is for interest and detailed demographic, for some reason, they targeted iPhones, they targeted Galaxy Notes, even though this specific brand does not sell Galaxy Notes or anything related to that. And they also targeted online shopping. Now, we take these three into account, we go back to the campaign level and we look at the overall results this specific campaign is getting and we can see exactly what is going on. So if we go back to the campaign level section, look at this campaign's ROAS, we can see that overall it's a 1.77. So really not the best results. If we just look at it during this month, we can see it's dipping even more. So it's a 1.55 right now. So obviously this is happening because the audience signal section, the demographic section where you get to choose a specific interest, it's not for you to go in and choose something very, very broad. So for example, if you're selling iPhone cases, that does not mean that you go in and you choose the interest iPhone just because people who own iPhones don't necessarily always want the specific cover, let alone a cover which you want to sell. In addition, if you try to target something like online shopping, that might work with Facebook ads, but this is not Facebook. This is Google. If you try to do that, you're going to end up losing a lot of money, which is again, unfortunately, the case that's going on here. So you want to kind of proceed with caution when it comes to the interest and detailed demographic section within a performance max, because again, this is one surefire way to dominate with Google shopping based on what action you take right over here. So that is why this is on my list. Really just stay away from that section unless you know what you're doing, unless you know what specific interest and demographic and that too very targeted that you want to choose. But this brings me to the fifth point on the list, and that is choose your conversion primary and secondary actions wisely. Now, going back to this account right here, going to tools and settings, going back to conversions, here's what I'm talking about. So within each conversion action, you can see that either it says primary or it says secondary and Google actually lets you choose this. Believe it or not, which one you choose makes a huge difference because at the end of the day, whatever is primary is what Google at the account level is going to optimize for. So right here, data driven is the conversion action that says primary, which means Google is right now optimizing for purchases as a primary conversion action. However, the second thing, which is in a different language, so I'm not able to read what it is exactly is also primary, but luckily it's not recording any conversion. So there's no issue with that at all. However, if it was recording conversions and this was also primary, that would be a very bad sign that would just tell you that all, a lot of the data that you have on your Google ads account as of right now, it's not necessarily accurate because there's two primary conversion actions firing. So at any given time, there should only be one primary conversion action. If you're an e-commerce brand, it should be the sales or purchases conversion action. So the secondary ones are the kind of the second players, meaning add to cart, initiate checkout. Any of those things should definitely be secondary. There's no reason 
for them to be primary at all. So you want to go into your conversion section and make sure this is set up properly. Cause again, if this is not set up properly and there's like multiple different conversions showing here, that's going to be a very huge red flag. That's going to be a huge sign that a lot of the data you're getting, it's not fully accurate. So essentially what that means is think of this as the foundation of your building and your building is your campaigns, your campaign, meaning your building will crumble and fall apart if you don't have a strong base. So if you have secondary actions here, some are primary and it's all messed up. Your building, meaning your campaigns will not perform well. They will eventually crumble and not get you the desired results. So it's super important for you to check the primary and secondary actions. This brings me to the second to the final way to dominate with Google shopping. And that is to have a retargeting flows, not only with the Google ads, but also in the back end. So through email and SMS, because I'm going to be honest with you. If you're using Google shopping ads, Google search ads, your conversion rates are most likely very, very bad. 1%, half a percent, 2% even, maybe that's not really that bad, but it's still not the best. So what that means is you're losing about 97, 98, 99% of the people. So in reality, Google ads and all the traffic that comes into a very, very leaky bucket. I mean, your bucket, which is your store in this case, is just leaking from all sides and angles. So one really good way to increase your Google shopping, Google search ad results is to stop those leaks. Because again, when Google attributes the sales that happen on your store back to its campaigns, and it, it's going to attribute that because once you have email marketing, SMS, all of the back end stuff in place, it's going to stop that leaky bucket It's going to reduce the leaks within that bucket. So more people purchase and Google thinks more people are purchasing because of the campaign. So what happens? your quality score starts to go up, your CPC start to go down because your quality score is going up. Google thinks you're doing a better job. Your website is really hanging on to these people and making sure that those people don't leave your website without purchasing. And obviously it wants to reward anybody that is giving its users a very, very positive experience. So that's why it's so crucial for you in order for you to actually start dominating with Google ads to kind of take your focus off of just clicking random buttons within the dashboard of just doing random work every day and going back into your, your back end, your email marketing, SMS, making sure to stop all those leaks, making sure to have multiple retargeting campaigns on different platforms running because that's the only way to increase your AOV. That's the only way to increase your quality score and thus pay less per click, pay less per sale and so forth. So again, make sure to kind of stop those leaks. But this brings me to the final point on the list, and that is to just fill out the back end information when it comes to your Google Merchant Center via SIM process or any other feed app like data, feed watch, or whatever you use. And here's exactly what I mean. So right now I'm within a Shopify store. I'm within the SIM process app. Just click the one random product. And there's a lot of information provided right here, but I want you to notice something. So from Google product category all the way down, there's a lot of unchosen things. And in 2022 and onwards, the number one way to kind of dominate with Google shopping ads is to make sure you're standing out of the crowd. And that's not necessarily done just with images because I can almost guarantee you about 95% of e-commerce store owners out there do not spend time choosing the specific category, do not spend time choosing colors, materials, etc. So because they don't do that, that means you can now come into the game select all of the necessary information, provide all of the correct information and have your ads performing better than them. Just based off of the sheer fact that you did the work they didn't do, you provided all of this important information. So what you do when you provide all this information is you make Google's life easy. So that's one basic way to dominate with Google shopping in 2022 and onwards. Just come in at least for your main winning products and try to fill out as much information as possible. Because again, whatever information information you do decide to fill out is just going to help you and help Google's algorithm understand what your products are, what your website is, who to show the products to, the ideal audience, and all of that important information. So again, make sure to fill out all of the backend information for the Google Merchant Center, at least for your main winning products. But again, to kind of recap what we went over, number one, use different existing images from your competitors. Number two, use enhanced conversion tracking. Number three, use the right conversion attribution model. Number four, stay away from the interest and detailed demographic section, especially with performance max number five check for the primary and secondary conversion actions number six use the retargeting flows both in email marketing as well as sms and also advertising platforms and finally number seven fill out the back-end information 
for Google Merchant Center. And I promise you, if you do all these seven things, you will be able to take your e-commerce brand to the next level. But if you would rather get help with these, if you're already doing around $30,000 or more in sales, and you just want to scale your e-commerce brand further without having to do a lot of the work yourself or just basically outsource it completely, go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen. But if you found any type of value in this video, make sure to destroy that like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video.